So you want to introduce a friend to Rush, but you can only use three of their albums. Which ones would they be? Let's talk about it. All right. So in the previous video, we talked about five songs that we would use to introduce someone to Rush for the first time, or maybe uh, one of these uh, YouTube reactors to songs. There's a bunch of them out there now. If they were to ask you, what songs uh, can I use to, uh, what, what songs can I play of Rush, like to get to know them, or what are their best songs, whatever the case may be, I recommended five songs that you can use to introduce them to the world of Rush. So, but now we have another scenario where either perhaps they've heard of Rush, they've heard some songs, or you may just want to go this route instead of showing them the, the five songs. You want to introduce them to Rush by recommending records of theirs. Which records would you recommend? Well, I would suggest three. And there's three in particular that it needs to be. <laughs> I mean, that's what I think. Whether you like the records or not, if you're going to introduce Rush to someone for the first time using their records, then there's really only three that it should be, that they should be to introduce them. Now, Rush has a huge catalog of records. They have 20 studio albums, not including the live uh, performances, the live recordings. Actually, maybe not 20 studio albums, maybe 19 and a half. I mean, Feedback was an album of covers, songs that influenced them when they were really young. Uh, so we'll say 19 and a half <laughs> albums that, they, that you have to choose from. So. Of all of those, which would, be, which would be the three that would be the best representation of Rush as an introduction to that world? Here we go. Number one, the first record you should recommend for a newbie Rush fan is Moving Pictures. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, Moving Pictures is the most recognizable, most popular, most sold record of Rush being that the case and the fact that even the band members themselves have mentioned how much of an affection they have for that record uh, was wonderful to record they were really in sync they really got really song oriented um, their singing was better their playing was better they really got to in their young years a, a certain maturity when moving pictures came out so much so that it was referred to as having hit hit Hit, hit. Really, all of the songs on that record are absolute killer songs. And it's a very listenable album. It is, in fact, the album that burst them into the world scene, you could say. They had fans around the world before that. But in the beginning of that tour, where they would be filling out these um, arenas or smaller venues, let's say, by the end of the tour, when they would go back, they'd be, they'd be filling in these huge arenas or stadiums because they got, they got so popular. And with songs as recognizable as Tom Sawyer, Limelight, pretty much, we can go on, just the whole record. <laughs> it is such a great record that it actually also really represents the band. That when you hear any of these songs, and even someone who's really not heard Rush that many times, whatever song is playing of Rush on the radio, they instantly recognize it, recognize it as Rush, whether they, know, whether they know much about the band or not. So the number one record of Rush to introduce to a newbie Rush fan is Moving Pictures. In the previous video where I talked about the five songs to introduce, to use to introduce someone to Rush, I mentioned that they should be within a very limited time frame to make the songs as listenable as possible and it would make the listener curious as to what else does this band offer. So in this case, the number two record that we're recommending is really a representation of early Rush and that record is 2112. So 2112 is the second record that you should recommend to a newbie Rush fan. Rush fan? And the story with 2112 is that the band was expected to make a breakthrough record with hits on them or they were pretty much done with the record label and the band said no we're not having it we're gonna do it the way we want and the results will be as they may we'll deal with it and it ended up being the breakout record that they needed sidelong song 2112 and with some other extra songs it really allowed them 
the musical freedom that they needed to, from that point forward, they could record any way they want, whatever style they wanted to, and the record company had nothing to say about it. So that freedom that they recorded with and that bravado, that rebellion, that is kind of what is typical in rock is actually what came out on that record in 2112. It's very aggressive, it's very heavy, and that's when Getty's voice was pretty screechy at the time, it had a really wide range, and he could sing low, he could sing high. Alex Lifeson's guitar was very aggressive, very heavy, um, compared to other eras of Rush. This is an era where they were really heavy, so it is a good representation of the music of Rush at the time, and it's a very good introduction to that era. So when the newbie person hears this record, they'll see and learn about the diversity of the band, the versatility of the band, and they'll want to see what records before and after 2112, what did those sound like? And that's what 2112 will offer. So that's the number two record that you, could, you would recommend to a newbie Rush fan. Now the number three record, this is where it gets really interesting because my theory has always been if you're going to introduce someone to Rush, if you're going to use three albums, it would always be the first one would be 21, uh, would be Moving Pictures, the second one would be 2112, and the third one would actually be whichever record was the latest one. So if we're talking from Moving Pictures back, you, you know, someone who wanted to introduce a friend to Rush would pretty much use any album because there weren't that many. But then Signals comes along, and now you have a little bit more choice. And as time goes on, each record would represent what Rush was at that time. As a matter of fact, after every record, if you asked each member of the band, what's your favorite record of all your catalog, they would always say the latest one, because that's the one they had the most passion for, that's the most recent one. They're a band that always wanted to move on from what they just did. They never were a band that relished the past. For them, it was you know a good memory, and they would play a lot of those songs on their tour but what they were most passionate about what they liked the most was always their most recent stuff and logically if you want to introduce someone to a band you want to play their latest stuff because that's who they are at the moment and if they have a catalog then you would bring that other stuff in too but in Rush's case because they have such a wide and abundant catalog you have the liberty the flexibility to introduce the albums this way moving pictures being the first one 2112 being the second one and the third one being whichever one was the latest one. Currently, obviously, it's going to be Clockwork Angels. That's the latest one. And guess what? That's always going to be the latest one because there are no more Russia records. Um, they're not going to make any more. So what does Clockwork Angels do, though? It's very interesting because Clockwork Angels has pretty much all the elements of the band throughout their entire career, really. They have very heavy songs. There, there are light hearted songs it's a concept album just like 2112 was just like hemispheres was and even though it's a concept album each each song on the album stands up on its own you really don't need to hear the song in context for the songs to make sense each song stands on its own getty displays a wide vocal range on this record as well and it's very reflective not only of their earlier hard rock harder rocking songs but also the era pretty much during the 80s in 90s where there were more melodic and softer songs pretty much clockwork angels encompasses all of that in one masterpiece concept record so then when you introduce this third album to someone who is learning about rush they'll curiously want to look at the other stuff that came previously and they're going to find that there is a wide variety of eras in rush's history a wide variety of sounds a wide variety of recording techniques a wide variety of song style, a wide variety of concepts, a wide variety of lyrical composition, guitars, synthesizers, drumming, electronic, acoustic, everything is in the Rush catalog. They tried all sorts of different things. And these three records, Clockwork Angels, Moving Pictures, 2112, will be a fantastic representation of everything that they've done. And then it will pique the curiosity of the listener or the viewer, because if they're watching YouTube videos these days, to want to learn a whole lot more. And as a matter of fact, doesn't that happen with every Rush fan today, that they remember the first time they heard a Rush song, and what did they do? They wanted to buy everything. They wanted to hear all of the records before. They wanted to find out, wow, what is this band all about? This music is great. 
That's what's gonna happen when you introduce these three records. The first two records of in my recommendations were so monumental to the su success of the band that Classic Albums came out with this DVD uh, called uh, Classic Albums, Rush, and they talk about the history of 2112 and the history of moving pictures and how these two records were such pillars in the history of Rush's success. And I strongly recommend uh, you watch this DVD. It is fantastic. So there you have it. Those are my three recommendations. Those are the three records that if you were to introduce someone to Rush for the first time, or if they've heard a few of the songs like I've mentioned previously and they want to learn more, the three records to introduce in this order, Moving Pictures, 2112, Clockwork Angels. Now let me know in the comments below, do you agree with me or do you disagree? Do you think that it should be those three records? Are those, is that pretty good? Or you think, nah, it should be something else. It definitely should be this one or it definitely should be that one. And let me know down below what records you think the three should be if you're gonna introduce someone to Rush and in what order you, they should hear them in. I would really love to know because you know, Rush fans, they a lot of them have their own preference, their own style, their own way of thinking about the band. And I would love to hear what you think the three should be, or if you think I'm right. See you in the next video.